This video is about enthalpy of formation. By the end of this video, you should understand what an enthalpy of formation value is and be able to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction from the enthalpies of formation of the reactants and products. Using standard enthalpies of formation is the third way we'll look at for determining enthalpy of a reaction. Standard enthalpy of formation is defined as the enthalpy change that accompanies the formation of one mole of a compound directly from its elements with all substances in their standard states. This is often called the heat of formation as well. For example, if we want to discuss the enthalpy of formation of CO2, we would need to know the energy change associated with the formation of one mole of CO2 directly from its elements, carbon and oxygen, in their standard states, meaning solid carbon and gaseous oxygen. These are the states in which they're most commonly found. According to this information here, the enthalpy of formation for CO2 is negative 339.5 kilojoules per mole. That means for every mole of CO2 formed, 393.5 kilojoules of energy is released. A standard state, which is indicated in our symbol up here by the degrees sign, is a precisely defined reference state. Since these values would vary if carbon were, say, in its gaseous form or liquid form versus its solid form, we need some kind of reference state. For example, for compounds, gaseous substances must be at 1 atm and solutions must be 1 molar. For elements, the standard state is the state that that element is in at one atmosphere of pressure and 25 degrees Celsius. Here's a table of standard enthalpies of formation. Picking one at random, we see HCl will release 92.30 kilojoules of energy when one mole of it is formed directly from hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. This table comes from your textbook and you'll need to use it to solve problems going forward. These are always values you'll be given. So how can we use these enthalpies of formation to calculate the enthalpy change for a reaction? The enthalpy change for a reaction can be calculated by subtracting the enthalpies of formations of the reactants from the enthalpies of formations of the products, as shown in the equation here. This sigma sign just means the sum, and N stands for moles, as this is a stoichiometric relationship. Note that elements already in their standard states are not included in delta H calculations. That is, the delta H of formation for an element in its standard state is zero, since you can't form an element directly from its elements. It's already in its standard state. Let's consider why this works. Here's a graphic showing the energy change for the reaction between C3H8 and 5H2Os to yield 3CO2s and 4H2Os. Breaking this reaction down, we see that first we've considered the energy change associated with breaking down the reactant molecules. In other words, the energy required to break the bonds to return them to their elements in their standard states. This is essentially taking the opposite of the enthalpy of formation values. That energy is energy that must go in to break bonds. However, once these elements form new bonds, we can use the standard enthalpies of formation of the products to figure out how much energy is released. The difference between these values is our enthalpy of reaction. In this case, we've released 2,220 kilojoules more than we had to put in to break down the reactants. Let's look at an example together. You're going to need Appendix C in your textbook in order to do this problem. So take a minute to pull out your textbook and turn to page 1059, Appendix C. In order to find the delta H for this reaction, Let's start by totaling up the sum of the delta H's of formation of the products and the sum of the delta H's of formation of the reactants. I recommend doing this in two separate steps and then subtracting. This will help minimize mathematical errors. So, looking first at the products. We have 6 moles of CO2. The enthalpy of formation of CO2 is negative 286, so I'll multiply that by 6 to account for these 6 moles. Likewise, 6 moles of water, I'll take 6 times the enthalpy of formation of water. Be careful to make sure that you're using liquid water, which will be different than solid or gaseous water. So in total, 4,077 kilojoules of energy are released when the product bonds are formed in this reaction. 
Now let's look at the sum of the delta H's of formation of the reactants. Here we have two moles of C3H6, so I multiply that enthalpy of formation by two, and nine moles of oxygen. But notice oxygen is already in its standard state, so it has an enthalpy of formation of zero. This gives me 41.8 kilojoules, meaning 41.8 kilojoules must be absorbed to break the bonds in the reactants. Now we can subtract to find the difference, and we find that the overall enthalpy of reaction for this reaction is negative 4,119 kilojoules. In other words, 4,119 kilojoules are released when this reaction occurs. Let's pause here to summarize the three ways we've talked about to calculate delta H of a reaction, since these are the three we'll be discussing in this unit. There's a fourth, which we'll talk about in a later unit. First, we looked at calorimetry, which uses a coffee cup calorimeter and the specific heat equation. Then we used Hess's law to sum up a series of steps to determine the delta H for a larger reaction. And finally, we looked at standard enthalpies of formation, which use standard enthalpies of formation of products and reactants to calculate the delta H of reaction. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at what the enthalpy of formation is, and then we learned how to use it to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. 